In this video, we're going to discuss how to develop void ratio versus effective stress plots using time deformation plots for various loadings. So we'll go ahead and write this down. Um, as you've seen, I've already written it on the screen. Uh, so maybe pause the video and, and write this first bullet point down. So uh, the first step is the following. We're going to say this is our general procedure of of doing this. Again, we're developing void ratio versus effective stress plots using time deformation plots for different loads. So the first thing we're going to do in our procedure is we're going to um, compute the height of soil solids. Okay, so H sub S is the height of soil solids. And to compute this, we're going to say this equals the weight of soil solids divided by the cross-section area of the specimen times the specific gravity of the soil solids times the unit weight of water all in the denominator. And uh, this is going to um, come from, you know, a phase relation. But you don't have to draw a phase diagram for this. You just, uh, you just calculate this um, as it is here. And this is also uh, comes from a particular moisture content, okay? And then of course, as we said before, A is the cross section area of the specimen. And you know, normally these are circular uh, or cylindrical specimens, but with a circular cross section. So of course this would be, you know, pi D squared over four. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is going to be compute the void height, H sub V. So H sub V again is void height. So this is the total height of the voids within your specimen. And the way we calculate H sub V is we say it's the initial height minus the height of the soil solids that we had just computed. So again, H naught is the initial specimen height okay and then the third item we're gonna uh, do is we're gonna calculate the initial void ratio this is e naught initial void ratio and this is equal to the height of the voids divided by the height of the soil solids okay and moving on, so pretty straightforward so far. Step four, we're going to compute the change, let me spell that a little bit better, change in void ratio for the first load increment sigma prime one, okay? Now this is the load that causes delta H one, okay? So remember, we're, we're extending what we've talked about with time deformation plots. So for a given uh, time deformation plot, we're going through these steps and um, delta H1 is going to be the change in height during that particular load increment for that one time deformation plot. So let's write that down. Delta H1 equals um, the difference between the initial and final dial gauge readings for that load increment, okay, for that particular load increment. So the way we calculate the change in void ratio would just be simply delta E1 equals Delta H1 divided by H sub S. Now you may be wondering, 
Well, this is a void ratio, right? This is a, it's, it's a change in void ratio, but it's still. So recall that the uh, definition of void ratio is volume of voids over uh, volume of soil solids. But remember, we are talking about um, a, a consolidation test specimen. So remember, the diameter is is held constant, basically, right? The the diameter is not, it's trapped so that you don't have the opportunity to develop a Poisson effect. So really what's changing, the volume is changing, yes, but really what's changing is the height, okay? So um, how do we calculate uh, the new load increment? Well, we'll say, I'm sorry, the new void ratio. So E1 is going to be, quote, the new void ratio, which just equals E naught minus this delta E1 that we just computed. And then step five, we're going to say iterate um, these steps as needed. Okay, step five is, is just an iteration step. So how do we, uh, how can we, you know, maybe explore step five in more detail. Well, we're going to say delta E2 is equal to delta H2 divided by H sub S, okay? Where, what's delta H2? Delta H2 is the difference in initial and final height for the next load increment, okay? And then, of course, we're, we're iterating, right? We're still in step five. So E2 is equal to E1 minus delta E2. And we keep going on and on, and we say delta E3 is delta H3 divided by H sub S. Let me make that subscript look better. Delta H3 divided by H sub S. And then of course, E3 is E2 minus delta E3, okay? And then dot, dot, dot. So if we wanted more of a, uh, of a general expression here, we can say delta E sub I equals delta H sub I over H sub S. And then of course, E sub I equals the previous E value, E sub I minus one, minus delta E sub I, okay? So um, in this particular uh, setting, what does the subscript I represent? I is, uh, you write it in this is a sentence maybe, I is both a counter and the load increment of interest, okay? And then step six is the final step. Step six says we can uh, then plot either a semi-log plot for sigma prime values on the horizontal axis, which that's going to be on the log scale, or on an arithmetic axis. Now, generally from, from our previous course in soil mechanics, um, what did we do? Well, we, we generally plotted uh, this on a semi-log plot, which meant that the uh, horizontal axis, um, which was the sigma prime axis, was uh, on a log scale, okay? So let's, let's go ahead and just kind of visualize this. What you would have is you would have time deformation plots for several loads 
sigma prime, okay? So for example, you'd have, you know, um, a dial reading and you'd have some time value here and, you know, maybe you'd have some kind of time deformation plot here for sigma prime one and then you'd have time and dial reading and this would be for sigma prime two and you know the data would be shaped a little bit differently but still similar and then you know time and reading dot 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 for sigma prime sub i okay and remember normally normally um these these plots you'd have one for every day that you ran the test and remember a consolidation test takes how many days well five to eight days depending on how many load increments you have but let's say you know you have several of these and then from all of these plots right from all of these plots you you perform this six step procedure and where you're iterating is in step five right in step five that's where you're calculating all of these e values uh, for for each load increment, okay, and then what you end up with uh, is a is one plot, one plot at the end of it that incorporates aspects from uh, all of these all of these time deformation plots. And again, this is typically the sigma prime axis is typically on a log scale, and that's where we have this plot that looks often a lot like this, okay? So this is the general procedure of how to develop a uh, void ratio versus effective stress plot from several time deformation plots, okay? And again, you know, you would have these data points here that you've, that you've connected, and you know, each one of these E values, each one of these E values here, comes from step five where you iterated. So this would be, you know, E1, maybe e, E1 right here. And this one is maybe E2. This one is maybe E3 from all those iterations, so on and so forth. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, and we will uh, do an Excel example at some point together uh, where we develop one of these from scratch. So this will conclude this video.